Okay, I think everyone's joined us now, so we'll get started. Uh, so hello to the students, teachers, and parents that are joining us today in honor of the NHL's Women's History Month. The NHL and the NHLPA would like to welcome you all to the NHL Women in STEM's career panel as part of the Future Goals Hockey Scholar Program. Now, my name is Olivia McDonald. I'm going to be your guys' host today. I'm so excited to be here, and we're going to celebrate STEM through the game I love, hockey, of course. Uh, I do live in Calgary, Alberta in Canada. I'm a TV and in-game host slash digital producer for the Calgary Flames, their AHL team, the Wranglers, as well as our NLL team, which is lacrosse, our Roughnecks team. I'm originally from Kamloops, BC, if anybody knows where that one is. Um, I attended university here in Calgary, Alberta at Mount Royal University. I graduated with a diploma in broadcast journalism, and my path here includes a bunch of different things in becoming a woman in sports. I was a news anchor and a reporter in Prince George, BC. So shout out to Prince George. Um, I lived there for about a year. It was really cool. And then I did an internship with the Vancouver Canucks in Vancouver. Worked with them for quite a while in their game, to, game presentation department, which is a really cool aspect of the game to learn. Um, and a lot of other small things that got me to my path to the Calgary Flames. So let's talk a little bit about what's going on today. The Calgary Flames... Seattle Kraken, San Jose Sharks, Winnipeg Jets, and all additional NHL clubs in conjunction with the NHL and the NHL PA are also so thrilled to be able to offer the Future Goals digital STEM resource to you and your class. And we hope you've been able to keep up with your math and science skills while being at home or in your classroom. We know a huge part of this course is learning about careers in STEM and how this topic connects to hockey. So the NHL and the NHLPA, through many investments of the Industry Growth Fund, have committed to providing opportunities, particularly for girls. In 2018, the NHL and the NHLPA convened the Female Hockey Advisory Committee to accelerate the growth of female hockey in North America and ensure that girls can experience all the opportunities and benefits that sports provides, because there are a lot. Well, we have some great speakers lined up for you today who will share how they use STEM to excel their careers every single day throughout the panel discussion. Please think of any questions for our speakers that you guys have and feel free to write them in that Q&A chat where you guys put your locations and grades, all that kind of stuff. So you can pop it in there if you have any questions. Um, that's just at the bottom right of your screen. And then if there is time, we'll get to as many as we possibly can because I know you guys have a ton of good questions. And then later on in the session, we have a fun trivia game planned for you. So make sure to track how many of those questions you get right. Um, finally, make sure to take pictures if you want. And then please tag the NHL, the NHLPA, and Everfy K12 on social media. And your favorite team, make sure to tag them as well. So we can check out the fun that you guys are having in this event. Okay, let's get to the exciting part and introduce all of our panelists. So first, from the Calgary Flames is Joanne Kuzoff. Joanne is the Field of Play Supervisor for the Calgary Sports and Entertainment Corporation, same as me. I know Joanne very well. As a member of the building operations team, Joanne ensures the playing surfaces and the event level amenities are in top shape and safe for play and practice for all four of our teams. We've got three hockey teams and a lacrosse team as well to play out of there. A native of Ontario, she operated several recreational facilities in the greater Toronto area and installed many hockey and curling rinks as a contractor for Jet, Jet Ice before coming to Calgary five years ago as one of only two females that drive the Zamboni in the NHL. A very cool job. Joanne takes special pride in being able to motivate young women to follow their passion and do what they love regardless of barriers that may be perceived to hold them back. I love Joanne. I give her a hug every single day. I see her. Um, I always ask her about being a Zamboni driver. It's one of my favorite things. Make sure you ask her some questions about that because I think it's really cool. Um, let's give Joanne a wave if you want to hit the wave button. Welcome her to this chat. All right. Next up, we have Namita Nandakumar from the Seattle Kraken. Namita is currently the manager of hockey analytics for the Seattle Kraken where she uses statistical tools to inform all aspects of hockey operation decision-making. She joined the team in 2020 to help prepare for that 2021 expansion and entry draft. Namita previously spent two seasons as a quantitative analysis for the Philadelphia Eagles, shout out Philadelphia, after graduating from Wharton with a BS in economics and concentration in statistics. She has also written publicly about her sports analytics research for 538, 
and Athletic Philadelphia and Hockey Graphs. So let's all give Namita a wave. If you guys can hit that wave button, welcome Namita in. This is really cool for me because I haven't met a lot of these women either. So it's nice to introduce them. All right, up next, I'm also excited to introduce Danielle Perron representing the Winnipeg Jets. Danielle brings a wealth of expertise as a senior accountant at True North Sports and Entertainment, applying her 10 plus years of experience to her, her diverse role. While primarily focused on the financial aspects of ticketing for the Winnipeg Jets, Manitoba Moose, and various concerts, she also plays a vital role with the True North Youth Foundation. Beyond the office, Danielle volunteers her time with Canine Advocacy Manitoba, a local animal rescue charity organization. I'm sure lots of you have pets at home. Let's give Danielle a welcome into the chat. Make sure you hit that wave button if you want to say hello. Yeah, we got some maybe some Jets fans out there. All right. And finally, of course, we have Cassie McBride from the San Jose Sharks. Cassie currently oversees legal, HR, HR, diversity, inclusion, and belonging, community relations, and the Sharks Foundation at the San Jose Sharks and wider Sharks sports and entertainment portfolio. She's got the long list of things that she has accomplished in her career. She is committed to pioneering the future of sports and entertainment, demonstrated by her involvement in the UK expansion of the Jacksonville Jaguars the form formation of All Elite Wrestling, and most recently, the ongoing expansion of the Hockey in Bay Area. Let's welcome Cassie as well with a wave. Welcome, Cassie. Okay, we're just so excited to introduce everybody. Again, if you have questions for any of them, if anything in that piqued your interest, just make sure you put that question in the chat so we can get to all of your questions after, hopefully, uh, with as much time as we possibly can. But we're going to get to some questions for these ladies that are joining us today. Okay, let's start with Cassie. Cassie, first question for you growing up, what was your favorite subject in school? Hi, thanks Olivia, and thanks to everybody for, for joining today. I'm so excited to be here with you all. Um, so favorite subject, uh, it's a tough one for me because I, believe it or not, was not very good at a lot of the math and science, even though I loved science. Um, I was always better or excelled at more of like the, the writing and the reading and, you know, that that kind of world. So it's really interesting that now my job actually does touch a lot of STEM. And even throughout my career, you know, when I was in middle school, I started doing um, like web design and was in, in the tech space for a little bit. So even though I wasn't great at it, I was passionate about it and I was able to, to kind of help that kickstart my career. Awesome. And you, you, I mean, you kind of almost touched on it there, but talk a little bit about your daily responsi responsibilities and how that connects to STEM in your career. Yeah. So as Olivia mentioned, um, I, I'm a lawyer by trade, um, which again, lawyers, right? You typically think more on like reading and writing versus math and science. Um, but in my current role, I also oversee a lot more than just contracts, right? And in doing the legal work, um, I also oversee community relations and the Sharks Foundation, which I think as many of you all know, we have a lot of STEM programming um, in the community. And, you know, when I think about how we look at data analytics and, you know, really trying to make informed decisions um, at all levels of the organization, that's where, you know, you really have to be data driven, especially in today's world, right? And so a lot of what I do behind the scenes, whether it's managing HR, our employee workforce, um, really looking at statistics and analytics around how our workforce is changing or, you know, what events we bring to the venue, hockey games, concerts, right? There's a lot, there's a lot that goes into behind the scenes. And so really fortunate that in my current role, I have a pretty wide variety of different uh departments that that I interact with and um, really leveraging sort of the data behind it is is what helps us drive us forward. That's really cool. And maybe for anybody on this call that would be interested in a career like yours, do you have any subjects that you like advise them taking or maybe any community events they can get involved with to kind of take that path? Yeah. So for me, I think, you know, one of the the things that I've learned throughout my education is that it's really important to not like box yourself in, right? So you might be really passionate about math and science, but, you know, and maybe less so into other subjects. Really, I would challenge everybody to kind of think outside the box, right? And, and take subjects that maybe you're a little less comfortable in, right? Because that's where you grow. That's how you learn. 
And just as, you know, it's important to, to figure out what you want to do and what you're passionate about, it's also equally as important to figure out what you don't like, right? Um, and so I never thought that ultimately, you know, my education and my studies would land me into law school, which then would land me back in sports, right? So it really just goes to show you that, you know, take a wide variety of subjects, whatever interests you, and you can always sort of tie it back, right, to the career that you want. Olivia, you are on mute. Sorry. Thank you. Yep. I thought I hit it, didn't hit it. We're going to go through all these questions with all the ladies as well to make sure everyone can kind of get the answers to these. So ladies, prepare your answers to these ones as well. Um, so you get to hear from every single team as well. Uh, next one for you, Cassie, do you have a role model or mentor that a woman that you kind of modeled maybe your career after somebody you look up to? Um, so if you want to tell me who that is and maybe the impact that they've had on your career. Yeah. So for me, I think, you know, my mentor, um, both personally and also professionally is, is my mom. Um, you know, she was a little bit more science oriented, um, had the math skills. Um, she did a lot in the finance space and helped my dad ultimately start their company back in the eighties. It was a tech company. Um, so I kind of was able to grow up in that environment, right. And see firsthand the benefits of, what it is to be an entrepreneur, um, how to best leverage your, you know, finance and math skills, right, to help build something out of nothing. And so really, I look up to her when I think back and, you know, kind of look at the progression of my career. Um, you know, I don't come from a family of lawyers or anything like that. But a lot of the life lessons and the skills that I developed along the way, I really owe it to her. Love that answer. My mom was a huge role model as well. She's she's not a broadcaster at all. So I didn't follow in her footsteps. She was more on the math side, but <laughs> yeah, I don't agree with that. Maybe we'll take it over to Joanne. Joanne will follow up great with that question. Do you have a woman that you look up to that's kind of helped in your career path as well? We still have you on mute. I did the same thing. <laughs> it's bound to happen multiple times today. Always, always. Uh... I, there's uh, not a lot of women in my line. Um, back when I worked uh, pools, rec facilities, uh, Kathy Seguin, who I was involved with through Orfa, which was our facilities program in Ontario, was uh, very instrumental in helping me sort of get into the teaching the ice making and teaching courses and sort of helped my confidence uh, in sort of being a presence as a woman with a lot of uh, strong male figures around. So uh, she, she was a big help. Um, I guess everybody's mom really uh, sort of supports them. She was always a, a cheerleader for me. I'm, I think running into a different generation from everybody, she stayed home and uh, just was a great cheerleader. She was an artist. Uh, I came much like Cassie to STEM sort of in a roundabout way. This is the second career for me. Originally, I was very into um, biology was my favorite. And I, in another life, was a massage and athletic therapist. So I uh, flipped over and uh, math was so scary for me. I didn't actually understand numbers and physics until actually I took a biomechanics course in university, which uh, for some reason flipped a switch when I was applying it to something that made sense to me. So that's... Uh, yeah, and I had, to, I guess, uh, Anne Hartley, who was my athletic therapy uh, and instructor in college, was, um, again, very, a leader in her field, um, showed me that, you know, you put the work in and you have an interest somewhere, follow it. It's, it's yeah, really you great. All that stuff, like the biology, the math, and how you've obviously come to enjoy it within your job. <laughs> how can you maybe relate that? to your career now and how do you use that? So field of play involves a lot of different um, concepts. Uh, there, there's the chemistry in your water treatment and making your ice. There's engineering and running your plant and keeping it frozen and you're you know, battling with the weather versus your indoor temperatures, humidity with your fans as they're all cheering in the stands. Um, that's what drew me to this was just the ever changing and always active uh, component of, uh, of, of the job. So um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's used 
every day and in, in every application. This morning we're changing softener heads and so there's plumbing and trades. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. I, I really enjoy it and uh, getting on the Zamboni and it's just driving in circles, but <laughs> with 1900 fans and uh, I think one of my favorites is the board lap and you've got all the little girls looking at you like, wow. <laughs> There's a, there's a girl on the Zamboni and it, it, it's just a wonderful feeling to be able to inspire uh, you know, the, the, the women of the world to maybe shoot for something that they they wouldn't think possible. Yeah, I even said that when you were getting on the Zamboni the other day. I was like, how do I do that? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> I don't know. So maybe for those girls watching you or the ones in the classrooms today, how do they get to where you are? I know you've had quite the interesting path, but do you have any advice on how they can maybe head that way? The benefit of this is recreation is, is a very easy way for young, you know, young, the youth to get into. I mean, most um, recreation facilities are, are looking for laborers or, or you know, people to come in and, and, and help out on a, a sort of an introduction, great part-time job through school. I was a lifeguard, um, which is sort of how I think I got into recreation. And uh, so that's the best way to get in on the ground floor. There, it, It's a lot of um, continuous education. So I, I mean, I, I did, um, I did phys ed at uh, Lakehead University and then athletic therapy at Sheridan College, uh, which sort of led me on a different path, <laughs> but it kept me in recreation. And I eventually after, you know, I took some time off with starting a family and came back to this. I always joked I was the oldest rink rat in the place because at 30 I kind of went in on the ground level and said hey I've got all this experience in pools but how do I drive that thing <laughs> and uh, yeah it's uh, it's it's very progressive um, so I would suggest if you're interested in in engineer like power engineering or you know being involved on uh, whether it be a government or private level in recreation programming, it, it's go down to your local community center and see see what they've got for you. Yeah, I love that. See, that's a great way to get started. Now, Namita, maybe we'll go off of that one. If you want to take us through your path on how you got to where you are right now with the Seattle crafting, yeah. Yeah, so I was just going to say, first off, you know, in grade school, my favorite subject was not math. So everyone sees like hockey analytics and they're like, oh my God, you must have loved math your whole life. Absolutely not true. You know, I was pretty good at it, but I think I, a lot of students always have, which is when am I ever going to use this, right? Like you have these examples in the classroom and you're kind of like, I don't know, like, I don't really want to do this for the rest of my life. But what I realized quickly, eventually in, in high school and college is that you can apply math to anything that you really love. And, you know, what I really loved is hockey. And I was a big sports fan growing up in the Philly area. I saw some Philly area schools in the chat. So shout out to you guys in particular. Um, but, uh, you know, I was just, I was a big like Flyers and Eagles fan growing up. Um, and I studied stats in college and, and read the book Moneyball, if ever, any, anyone's heard of it. And that really kind of gave me the sense that there's this growing sort of uh, field of people researching sports to try and figure out you know what are the best decisions that we can make so you know for the Seattle Kraken like anytime we have to decide who do we draft who do we trade for who do we sign uh, you know I am part of the team that helps you know get to an answer alongside scouts management coaches uh, things like that so I think you know that's been just incredibly cool I think to go from being a fan and just watching kind of being like oh my favorite team should do this to now, you know, um, I get to be part of that answer again for the craft. Yeah. Yeah, that's really neat. And you have so many different aspects that you seem to carry and cover with that job. Do you have a favorite part that you get to do with your career? For sure. So mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. first topic that I really researched in depth and what continues to be my favorite is the NHL draft. I think that it is such a cool and hard problem to kind of look at our picks every year and be like, okay, there are like 18 year olds across um, the world, literally Canada, the US, 
um, Europe, like get, kids get drafted all around the world, basically um, coming from all different mm -hmm. leagues and having all different mm -hmm. careers. Um, and, you know, we have to try and figure out who is going to be the best Seattle Kraken player in, you know, three, five, 10 years. And obviously that's a really hard question. I'm not saying that we always get it hundred percent right, but it's, it's a really, I think, cool problem to try and solve um, from a math perspective and um, see, you know, where do I agree with the scouts? Where do I disagree? Can we have um, conversations about, you know, what we're projecting? You are what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> I think that's so cool. Do you have, we kind of asked the other ladies this already. Do you have a mentor that you look up to some, a role model that you've um, kind of maybe modeled your career after or just somebody who's inspired you? Yeah, that was a good segue actually, because, um, you know, my boss right now, Alex Mandricki is the, one of our assistant general managers at the Kraken. And she's, I think one of, you know, a handful of uh, woman assistant general managers around the league. So it's, I think it's been really cool to see, you know, her pr progression with the Kraken and, you know, a lot of AGMs as well. Like we'll have, I mean, we, as I mentioned, touch all areas of hockey ops, but, you know, a lot of AGMs also have specific areas that they kind of oversee. And for Alex, um, that's the draft. So that's another thing where, you know, it's been really cool to kind of work under her, not just from the analytics perspective, but also digging deeper and deeper into the draft and, and really how can we, you know, get the most information, again, not just from numbers, but also from our scouts um, and put it together in the most informed way to hopefully draft the best players possible. Yeah, that sounds like a great role model to have. Danielle, maybe we'll take that right over to you if you want to touch on a role model that you've had in your career. Sure. So, hi, everybody. I'm Danielle. Um, for a role model, I would say there wasn't really a specific person for me, but um, as an adult, I've been lucky enough to have uh, amazing bosses who have actually all been women. So with all my jobs, they've, I've all been women bosses. And personally, I think that women can do anything that men can do. And this kind of just reinforced that for me. Um, so they've just been great resources for me um, throughout my career. And then currently in my department, there's 13 people and 12 of them are women. Wow. So I've just yeah, I've been very lucky to just be surrounded by a great group of women. Oh, that's awesome. Maybe do you want to give us a little quick overview of how you got to where your position is and maybe how STEM plays into that as well? Yeah, so I grew up in a hockey family. I've always loved hockey. My first job ever was at um, my local hockey rink. Um, so it's always been something I loved. Growing up, I wasn't... 100% sure what I wanted to do, but I enjoyed math. I was always good at it. Um, so when I graduated from high school, I thought I would give accounting a shot and I actually enjoyed it. So from there, um, I got my honors Bachelor of Commerce degree and I majored in finance and business management. Um, and then I worked for a little bit and my goal in the back of my mind was always to work for True North Sports and Entertainment because I've always been just being like a big fan. I remember when we got the team back, I was super excited. Um, my first Jets game, I cried. I was just so happy. Um, so when they had a posting for an accountant, I jumped on it and that's how I made it here. <laughs> I think that's a little bit of almost manifesting and probably all the women's <laughs> sports lives just watching yeah. <laughs> the team growing up and then you're like I'll work for them one day and then you take a look back and it's pretty crazy to see yeah how that's all kind of come true what's a favorite part about your job that you get to do so in the accounting world um if you think numbers and that kind of stuff which it is but I also enjoy that so for hockey you think sports but it's also a business and so in my role I get to see different aspects so it's not just in my department I get to work with other departments and basically know kind of everything that's going on so it's really interesting for me to see the company as a whole and see like what it takes to get people into the seats and um, all the different all the different aspects of it like the marketing and just how everything comes together to get the when you go to a Jets game there's so much more to it that you don't think of. And so I think that's interesting. 
Okay. I love that. Maybe we'll take this question to everybody, but Danielle, we'll start with you. If you want to give one piece of advice or a message that you can leave these students with, what would that be, do you think? So I would say, believe in yourself, never give up. Um, if you don't know what you want to be right now, that's okay. Um, try everything, join different clubs, do different hobbies. You'll be surprised what you find out that you like and maybe what you don't like. So I'm a strong believer in just trying, get out of your comfort zone, do new things. And I think that you, you'll learn a lot about yourself. Yeah, I like that. Cassie, what about yourself? Do you have a, a message or piece of advice uh, for these students on the call today or even the parents and the teachers as well? Yeah. Um, well, I love Danielle's advice um, because I try to, you know, all throughout my career, I've tried to deploy that like thinking as well, right? Try to experiment, um, get out there. But for me, I think one thing I would, I would share with you all is find a good mentor, right? And it can be someone in your personal life, right? A family member, a friend, it could be someone, you know, in a career that one day you aspire um, to have. But as you go through and you're trying all those new clubs and you're, you're getting involved in your community and, you know, you're taking a mix of different classes and go off to university, um, really try to, to sort of find the people who will help, you know, encourage you and support you on your path. Because um, it's really helpful to have those leaders in your life who can help guide you, right? And, and make sure that, you know, you're, you're on track to, to ultimately land your, your dream job. Because it's, it's not always luck. Like Danielle seeing that job opening and then applying for it and then getting that job, right? Um, that is amazing. And, you know, I know a lot of us have had somewhat, you know, different or unconventional paths to even breaking into the industry. Um, so the, the earlier you can start to kind of build your network, I think that that'll go a long way. Awesome. Joanne, how about yourself? Do you have a great piece of advice or message? Oh, your, your microphone again. See, this is going to happen every time. Again, <laughs> again. I'm not used to this. I don't do a lot of this. <laughs> We're doing I'm pretty good. I'm going to pick up that. on Cassie there. Uh, networking. Like, talk to people. Uh, don't don't be afraid to uh, get out there. Go, go. If you're, get connected with an organization, um, you know, go to their meetings. Go to, you know experiment like she said but uh, yeah don't be afraid to network never shut a door uh and and reflect think about the things you really love to do because chances are you can find a job that meets up with that <laughs> um so yeah don't don't shut a door and just keep talking to people and um it should just keep you on a good trajectory <laughs> Yeah, I like that. Networking is a good one. I, I'd say that's a big piece. I always either get told or tell people to just make connections, do coffee yeah. chats. If you see somebody who has a job that you want, talk to them about it, ask them questions. Yeah, oh, it's very, it, it, it's, it's huge. It's huge. It's how I got here uh, working in Ontario um, with numerous people in the industry. I was in and out of uh, ranks, sometimes up to 30 in a season to, to paint them and get them ready. And you just talk to people and they remember. And that's how I led, that's what led me here. I mean, I got a call from, from somebody who I'd worked with at Jet Ice in Ontario, who happened to be with the Flames, uh, let, letting me know there's a job opening. And, you know, when you make ice for a living, having an opportunity to come to the NHL is, uh, Wow, it, it, it's an amazing, amazing opportunity when a door like that reopens for you. So, and the day you got that call is probably a day you'll never forget. Though. Never. <laughs> Namita, what about yourself? Do you have a piece of advice or words for anybody on this call? Yeah, I think I would just keep it simple and say, do what you love. Like, something I think about when I look back on my career is actually it took a few years from learning that this type of job even exists to really believing that I could do it just because I didn't really see anyone who looked like me kind of in that line of work. Um, but nevertheless, here I am. And so, you know, there might be a lot of roles or, or paths that you want to take that maybe not a lot of women or, or not a lot of people who have the same background as you are trying, but do it anyway because you love it and and I think back to also like I spent years just like researching as a fan like I was doing as as a hobby because it was something I really loved so even if I had a different job but I was still doing that as a hobby I think I would be you know very happy with that as well so I think if you're just following your passion you really can't go wrong 
Yeah, I a hundred percent agree. Yeah, claps if if you can send. I don't know if you can send clap emojis <laughs> on this thing. I don't know how it works or a wave emoji for that thumbs up emoji. Everyone's such good answers. I mean, even I'd agree with all of you on all aspects of that. Even if you want to become a TV host, um, like myself or in game host, there's a lot of different ways and things advice that I would give. But my number one is probably maybe I've heard this before, just being a Swiss Army knife. If you guys have ever seen those little knife contraptions that have like scissors in it and a knife in it and a I don't know all these other tools in it you can use it's you can just slip it in your pocket and carry it around that's one of the best things you can have because you have so many different things to use it's the same as being a tv host if you can edit video and you can use social media and you can talk on camera and you can have a demo reel to send to people it's if you can have all these aspects it's probably one of the best advice that I can give because when I was in a news job, being a news anchor and reporter in Prince George, BC, um, it was one of the best things I had is that on the weekends when I was a TV host by myself, I edited my videos, I shot my videos, I carried the cameras and set up the tripods, did all the interviews and then went back, edited them, make sure it got out on the news the next day. I wrote my scripts, I did all the voiceovers. And it's just, I think that's what got me my job in sports was just having so many different things that I could do in one job. So if you can if you go to school and you don't know what you want to do, just gather as many things as you possibly can. And it'll lead somewhere that you, that you'll end up in the right path. Eventually it don't stress about it is the biggest thing I think, because we all do, we all did, I'm sure. And everyone would agree on this call that we all stressed out before going to school and getting into the right paths. But I actually want to ask that question on that note to all of you, what made you decide to go into hockey? Maybe Cassie, if you want to start with that one of why hockey? Yeah. So, um, my career actually started in baseball. Um, so I did a legal internship with the um, LA Angels down in Anaheim, California. And that was my first introduction into what it was like to be in like the legal department of a team. And I was hooked. Um, I was a huge sports fan growing up. Baseball was sort of my number one. My brother played in college. Um, and once I graduated law school, I actually didn't go straight into hockey. I went into football. So I worked for two seasons with the um, Tampa Bay Buccaneers and then six and a half seasons with the Jacksonville Jaguars. And then it was directly during the pandemic um, where the Sharks had an opening um, at sort of the senior leadership level. And I had just given birth. I had a baby. Um, I was sort of going through what a lot of people were going through during the pandemic, especially in sports when like live events were shut down temporarily, like trying to figure out, OK, what is my next career move? And so when I talked to the Sharks, um, there was something super exciting. Like I, you know, I grew up in New Jersey. I saw maybe some Jersey, obviously the Pennsylvania is well represented on the call. Um, so I remember like going to, you know, Devils games um, and really, you know, the excitement that you have with live hockey is unlike any other sport. Um, and so the diff it's similar, right? Like when you bounce around from league to league, it, there are a lot of similarities, but really what stuck out to me about hockey was, you know, A, the fact that it's a much longer season, you have a lot more um, to it in terms of the players. We obviously own, we own and operate our minor league team. Um, and so it was just more dynamic in a way. Um, and that was really exciting. Um, about the sharks. And so, yeah, I'm super happy to be part of, of this league and helping to grow the game, um, particularly here in the Bay area. Um, yeah. So didn't it, it sort of happened organically. Yeah. hundred percent. Danielle, what about yourself? How come hockey, how did we end up in hockey specifically? Yeah. So for me, like I said, I've always loved hockey. Um, but also for me, I didn't start out in this industry. I was actually in finance for 10 years. Um, and then after that, I went and did some manufacturing. Um, and then that's when this opportunity came up. And so for me, also an, a big thing that's important is um, community and charity, that kind of stuff. And True North is huge on community. They love, the, they love Winnipeg. They're very good um, getting the community involved. And I think that is super important. I love to volunteer. Um, in different areas. They have the foundation, which I also work with. So I just thought it was a great fit overall. Yeah, that's perfect. You just kind of, like our, I said, you get nervous trying to find your path, but you just end up in it somehow. It somehow works out. 
I mean, yeah. I want to say to myself, how come hockey? I know you had some past in football as well. That must have been quite the transition. Yeah, I mean, you know, the short answer is like I was a big, you know, football and hockey fan growing up. And so I was ha I was happy working in football. I'm happy working in hockey. I think uh, similar to Cassie's answer, like there are jobs that you can do kind of across a lot of different sports. I would say why I'm excited to work in hockey specifically right now um, is I think that the sort of analytics and, and research aspect of it is a little bit less further along than it is in other sports like basketball and baseball, which makes me feel excited that I can be kind of part of it um, from the beginning and kind of figure out more stuff, hopefully. Um, and then the other thing I'd say is I, I also agree that I think hockey is just like the most exciting game to watch in person. And it's very fortunate that I feel that way because, you know, I'm at 41 home games every year. So, um, but I, I just love the energy and excitement of the games. Yeah, there's nothing quite like watching a hockey game. I will say that. Joanne, what about yourself? I mean, how did we end up here? How come hockey? Hockey and lacrosse actually got lucky with that. Yeah. They are both incredible sports to watch. The energy is amazing. Um, typical Canadian girl. My dad was a huge hockey fan and he played. Um, I was actually a swimmer uh, growing up and always involved in pool. And the rink's usually right next door. So it dragged me over. And as soon as I got involved in making ice, it's, you know, hockey's sort of the what we do it for. So um, yeah, just it's our national, well, I guess lacrosse is our national sport, but it's right up there as a, a twin. And I've always, always been a fan, always enjoyed playing it. And it just, I don't know, I'm still starstruck that I'm involved in it at the level that I am to be out there on the ice, like with the players and <laughs> in the middle of the game. It, it, it's, it's a rush and it's, great and yeah I don't think there's any sport like it <laughs> yeah I agree being out there on the ice is one of the coolest things just being ice level too and I mean give us a hand wave or raise the hand in the chat if you've got some athletes in your classroom or parents teachers if you guys are an athlete maybe give us a hand raise because I was going to say my favorite part about working in hockey is from being an athlete to working in sports, you just feel like you're part of a team again because you kind of lose that after you stop playing. And so I found that as soon as I started working with the Canucks and their lacrosse team, the Warriors, you're just rooting for the team again. You feel like you're just one of them and you you wish that you could help them win. You pretend in your head that you're helping them win by wearing the same pair of socks or sitting in the same seat or whatever it is. You think you're helping them win, but it feels like you're part of it. And every time... They lose, you seem to feel a loss, uh, which is always tough when the season ends. It's probably one of the hardest things to deal with. And you're not even the one that was playing, <laughs> which is so sad, but um, it's cool. So if you were an athlete, it's such a good path um, to kind of keep that love for sports. I mean, I know just watching is also a great way to do it, but working for them is just a whole nother level. I I also still play recreational sports as much as I can, as much as free time as we possibly have. I try to fit that in, but yeah, it's a great, great crossover. Ladies, thank you so much for answering all of my questions. I know that was a lot. You guys all had amazing answers. Maybe if you have a clap emoji in the chat, let's send it for these wonderful women um, and all of their amazing answers. Hopefully they left you with some good advice that you guys can take and hold on to or just help for when you start deciding what to do with your schooling or subjects or sports that you want to take on. Um, I'm sure all these ladies have taken part. Like Joanne said, she was a swimmer. We've all done a ton of sports in our lives and that's probably added to how we ended up to where um, we are. So, okay, we're going to be moving on to the next section of our presentation. It's some trivia. Now, if anyone's ever been to a Flames game, maybe if you're from Medicine Hat um, or somewhere in Alberta, as a, as the in-game host for the Flames, I have a, a section called Olivia Trivia that we put on during Flames games. This will be a segment of that. This will be Olivia Trivia STEM version. Um, so there will be a poll you guys can answer and I can see um, how many people kind of get it right. We can talk about the answer. If we're ready, we will start with question number one. How many lines of symmetry do we see on a hockey rink? I'll give you guys just a little bit of time here to answer that if you want to click the box or if your teacher's there and they can click the box for you. We'll get some answers into this one. I, 
honestly, it's a tough question. I'll bet these ladies know the answer, but um, we'll see if the classrooms know what it is. I wonder if I can submit it an answer. Let's see. No, no. <laughs> I know the answer, so that would be cheating anyways. <laughs> okay. We do have a couple questions of trivia that we're going to get to go through, which is really exciting. So you guys love lots to answer. Make sure you write down which ones you guys get right as well. All right. Maybe let's see if we can see the answer to this. Okay. So 14% of you guys said two lines of symmetry. 57% of you answered three lines of symmetry. 29% answered four lines of symmetry. Joanne, do you know the correct answer to this one? Are oh, you muted? But I know you know the answer. Well, you know what? I'm I'm going to throw a wrench in here okay. <laughs> and say five if you count the goal lines. Oh, okay. See, I like that answer. So we don't have that answer. <laughs> the correct answer is two, but I like Joanne's answer of five. So there's a, there's a bonus answer if you guess that one. But yes, the answer is two. Thank you, Joanne. <laughs> All right, number two, trivia question number two. How many players are on the uh, on the ice for each team at one time in regulation play? So this doesn't mean during a power play. Uh, what do we got for regulation? How many players are on the ice for each team? The answer is we've got a three, four, five, and six. So think about the ice and when they're out there, how many players are out there? Of course, it's different for so many different sports as well, um, depending on what you're looking at. Of course, the soccer game is so many different different aspects of the game. I mean, can't even talk about swimming. There's not, <laughs> oh, there's just no answer for that one. There's one, I guess, for the team in a relay. So three, four, five, or six, how many players are on the ice during regulation? Okay, we're gonna take a look at the answers. 20% of you said five, 80% of you said six, 80% of you are right. There are six players on the ice during regulation time. Of course, that includes a goalie, a very important part of the hockey game. We got some good goalies here in Calgary as well. Okay, question number three. How many teams are in the Professional Women's Hockey League, the PWHL, if you haven't watched one of those games yet? get on it. They are so good. Their crowds have been insane. They put on such a good show. I mean, it's incredible what they've already done. So take a look at these answers. You can do four, six, eight, or 10. How many teams are in the PWHL? Namita, have you caught a PWHL game yet or seen what they have done? Um, not yet, but I've heard great things. So I'm very excited to tune in. Yeah. Even just the social media alone is like, taking over the internet, it feels like right now. It's awesome. All right. Four, six, eight, or 10 answers are in. Okay. 64% of you said there are six teams. 27% of you said there are eight teams. And 9% of you said 10. The correct answer is six. 64% of you got that one right. Good job. Congratulations. And then again, go check it out. There's so many good teams. I think they're selling out just about every single crowd that they have had. It's incredible. Um, a lot of good games. Okay, next question. Who was the first woman to play in an NHL game? This is a tough one. This is a really, really tough one. Cassie, would you even have a guess at the right answer? I, I wouldn't have known the right answer to this one. Oh, Cassie's muted. See, this is going to happen. Sorry, all I'm ha yeah, I'm having technical difficulties. As That's you okay. Here. I had to hop on my boat. Great. Sorry about that. We're happy to have you. <laughs> what do you think? Do you know the answer to this one? I don't, I wouldn't have had a guess. I luckily have the answer in front of me, but. Oh man, I'm not sure. I mean, I, and I'm hesitant because, so I, like I said, like I didn't grow up a huge hockey fan. Um, And some of these names, including Megan's, like she actually just did an activation with us and was here in San Jose. So I want to say Megan, but. <laughs> I don't know. It's so exciting. Oh, that's so cool that she was there. We got yeah. a bunch of good answers here. Um, okay, let's maybe take a look at the answers. 64% of you said Manon, 9% said Hillary, 9% said Kendall, and 18% said Megan. 
Cassie's hoping for the Megan answer. The correct answer is A, it's Manon. That is so cool. Okay, she is an incredible influencer in women's hockey too. So that's, that's a good answer to know. Remember that name for later on because that's maybe one that'll come up in your life if you start working in hockey. Okay, number five. This one's a really tough one. This comes with the Olivia trivia. What is my role with the Calgary Flames? So is it A, a TV host? B, a digital producer, C, an in-game host, or D, all of the above? It's it's a tough question. I love all the aspects of my job. Probably the TV hosting the most. My favorite part about my job is when I get to do lacrosse games, and I do a sideline reporting for TSN and ESPN, ESPN in the States, TSN for Canada. Um, and I get to be right in the, the box between the benches, and I get to talk about players on the other team or things happening. If a player gets injured, we talk about what's going on down on the floor. That's probably my favorite job. So if you ever want to watch an NLL game, you can stream those on TSN plus or ESPN plus. Well, I'm just doing a whole marketing campaign for the NLL right now. Um, okay. What do we think it is? Let's take a look at the answers. Okay. 17% of you said TV host, which is technically correct. Um, and then 83% of you said all of the above, which is the correct answer. I do all of the above. Um, plus more. Do a little bit of social media as well. I run the TikTok accounts for a couple of the teams because, you know, TikTok's a great place to scroll for way too long and watch way too many videos. So if your parents take your phone away because you're scrolling through TikTok too long, that's a good thing. Let them take it away from you because you can be on that thing for way too long. Okay, next question. What year did Namita begin her career with the Seattle Kraken? Was it 2017? 2019, 2020, or 2023. I remember this answer uh, from my little speech about you, Namita. That's so cool. What do you think? Uh, the guys, is everyone going to get it right? You've been there for a while now. I won't give it away by saying what year, but you have been there. I, I'm going to be honest. When I first saw this question, I had to think about it for a sec. I was like, wait, how long have I been here? Um, I would say the clue is that I was hired before we had to do our expansion draft so if you guys remember when that happens that may give it away that's a really good hint that's a very good hint okay what do we think let's take a look at the answers here nine percent said 2017 18 percent said 2019 64 said 2020 and then nine percent said 2023 namita correct answer 2020 yeah so the expansion draft and our first amateur draft was in 2021 so i was hired um, before that, um, and then actually in from in 2018 and 2019, I was working for the Eagles. So yeah, feels like it's probably even been longer than that. It always seems to fly by. All right, next one. Which department does Cassie work with in the San Jose Sharks? We've got legal, community relations, diversity, inclusion, and belonging, or all of the above. Cassie, what a cool job you have! Oh my goodness. Like that's just, so it's a lot, but it's super yeah. fun. It's super fun. And there's your hint at maybe what the answer is. It's a lot of things. Mm -hmm. That's the coolest part. Okay. Let's take a look at the answers. 44% said legal, which is true. And 56% all of the above. Cassie, what do we got for the answer? It is all of the above. Great job, everybody. Yes, she does so many things. All of you do so many things. It's incredible. That's And that's what goes back to that Swiss Army comment. I mean, just having so many things under your belt because you never know what you're going to end up covering in your job. All right, question number eight. What NHL club has Danielle spent her entire hockey career with? Is it the Anaheim Ducks, the Colorado Avalanche, Winnipeg Jets, or Carolina Hurricanes? Ooh, this is a tough one. Danielle. This question is going to be coming to you. I hope you know the answer. <laughs> I think I do. <laughs> <laughs> this is a this is a this is a good one. So I hope everyone was listening to her um, chat earlier, answer some questions or her bio. Um, Danielle, this is so cool. Okay, let's take a look at the answers. One hundred percent going to the Winnipeg Jets. <laughs> what do we think of that answer? Good job. <laughs> everyone is listening to you. That's awesome. All right, number nine. Just like Joanne, how many female Zamboni drivers are there in the NHL? Is there a one, two, five, or seven? 
This is crazy. I mean, okay, Joanne, you got to tell us when you're driving around on the Zamboni, you, you must get a pretty good thrill out of it. It's a rush. <laughs> I remember my first game. I was when I started. Uh, actually, I started in February uh, 2019, and I was supposed to have a very, very gradual introduction to actually driving an NHL game. I started with the WHL with the Hitmen. We didn't have the Wranglers at the time, but um, the second NHL game I attended as um, a trainee, uh, the evening driver called in sick. So I got to drive. You got thrown right into it. Right into it. All right, let's um, take a look at these answers here for you. 18% <laughs> said there's one other one. 64% said there's two Zamboni drivers that are female in the NHL. 9% said five and 9% said seven. What do we got for the answer here? Two. <laughs> two female drivers Zamboni drivers in the NHL that is crazy again I think we asked this earlier but if you maybe want to be a Zamboni driver when you grow up I know that my brother every time <laughs> we go to a hockey game would just watch ever he'd just wait for the Zamboni driver to come on he's not a <laughs> hockey fan to be fair but he would he'd just sit there and wait for the Zamboni driver to come on it was the same with the garbage man outside of our house he was yeah. waiting for the garbage driver to come by and he wanted to yeah. do that as well he is neither he didn't grow up to do it <laughs> but I mean I I never in my wildest dreams thought I would be here <laughs> doing this and it's, it's, so it, cool. it's crazy, but yes, it's, uh, I would love to see more. I am seeing more and more women in the uh, recreational facilities. Uh, it, 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 it's just great to see uh, things moving in that direction. So hi to Allie in Tampa Bay, who is the other driver. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's exciting sort of to be in in this day and age as uh, such a pioneering position. So, all right, well, we are going to get close to closing things off. Um, I think I'm going to ask one more question for you guys because it's Wednesday in the middle of the day. Well, for some of us, we're all in different time zones, to be fair. Give me one thing from each of you that you guys are going to do today for work. What's something that you maybe have to kind of cover off? Cassie, maybe we'll start with you. Oh, man. Um, Out of the millions. Of... What'd you say? Out of the millions of things you probably do have to do today. <laughs> um, we're doing a lot of hiring right now. So um, trying to make sure that we have like updated policies and procedures and things like that. So um, we'll be hitting the, the policies, um, pretty hard here today. Okay. Awesome. Danielle, what about yourself? What's one thing you have to do today? Um, so right now we are looking for looking towards next season. So today, um, I have to set up all the new people who have, uh, purchased season tickets. Okay. That's a good thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's really cool. Namita, what about yourself? What's something you have to do today? So last week uh, was the trade deadline. Um, so this week we're kind of looking at discussing, recapping how it went, how we felt about it, um, and what we can learn from it moving forward. Really cool. And Joanne, what about yourself? What are you getting up to today? Well, the flames are off the ice at noon from their practice. So we're getting the ice ready for the next team on there. We've got Vegas in town uh, for their game tomorrow. Yeah, and then we have a lacrosse game this weekend as well. So you're going to be super busy, I assume. I have four dark days in March. <laughs> That's a lot. If you, if anybody doesn't know, she used to change the flooring from ice to turf for hockey to lacrosse. Um, a lot of teams have to do that nowadays with NLL yeah. teams or even basketball teams in their arenas. They got to change that flooring over, which is a huge job. Sometimes I see Joanne when she's had like one hour of sleep. And I don't know how she does it. So ladies, thank you so, so, so much for joining us today. Maybe let's send another clapping emoji into the chat for these ladies and everything that they answered today and gave us some advice on. I know I, I'm just soaking in the advice and information from you ladies. That was so, so awesome. Um, a double thank you to our teachers for being part of the fourth annual Future Goals Women in STEM and Hockey panel discussion in celebration of Women History Month, of course. So thank you so much for your wonderful questions. 
Uh, we hope you learned some valuable lessons uh, from these remarks from these women today on our panel and feeling nice and inspired after this one. Uh, we also want to see how much fun you had during today's panel discussion. We've put up social media handles for each NHL team. Huge thank you again to the NHL and NHLPA for helping us host this event today. Make sure you tag the NHL and NHLPA and, of course, Everfly K12 in your posts. Thank you once again, everybody, for coming. I hope you had a great day. Enjoy the rest of your class. If you're still in school right now, um, make sure to listen to your teachers, eat your lunch, have your snacks, and then go hug your parents when you get home. But thanks for joining us today.